welcome back to my channel and for those of you who are new welcome to my channel my name is Carrie Kemp you can follow me on Instagram at the Carrie Kemp um, today I'm doing a little bit of a different video uh, I've always wanted to talk about it but I just didn't know how I didn't know when and so I'm just doing the thing um, it's been something that I've been wanting to share for a long time and so I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna share it so basically, about 11 years ago, I was diagnosed with toxic shock syndrome, or TSS. Um, you may have read about it a little bit uh, in the little pamphlets in the tampon boxes. And maybe you don't know what the signs, symptoms, or anything is. So I'm going to tell you my story. I'm going to tell you how um, TSS is formed and like how, how, it's, how you get it. Um, or like more commonly how you get it. And then, uh, yeah, different ways to prevent it so that it doesn't happen to you because it is not a lot of fun. So um, first, my story. So basically, 11 years ago, I, uh, I, I had my period. And back then, what I used to do is just put in one of those super absorbent tampons so that it would last all day and I wouldn't need to worry about it. Um, but I had gotten a cold and I ended up forgetting about it. And so... Um, I like put it in and I got the cold and all of a sudden my cold kept getting worse and worse and worse and um, Like I ended up running a f fever of over like a lot like it was like over 105 or something like, like it was crazy I don't quite remember uh, my fever number, but it was super high and I was like getting all rashy I had diarrhea. I was throwing up and so my mom was like, oh boy, okay, we're taking you to the doctor <laughs> And so we went to the doctor and I was having a really hard time just sitting like this. And so I told my mom, I'm like, mom, I'm gonna go lay in the bathroom. I know that sounds so disgusting going and laying in the bathroom at a doctor's office, but I wasn't gonna do it in the waiting room because that's weird. Um, and I didn't wanna like draw a whole lot of, a lot of attention to me. So I just went and locked myself in the bathroom. It was just like a one, one person bathroom. And I just literally laid on the floor. Um, and I know that sounds so gross, but that's how sick I was. And so my mom came and got me. We went into the doctors. They took all the tests and diagnosed me with scarlet fever because I was rashy, all that kind of stuff. So they gave me a prescription and sent me home. And so I told my mom, I'm like, mom, I seriously, like I, I need to get home. Like I was starting to feel nauseous at this point. Um, and she was like, okay, I'll take you home and then I'll go and get your medicine. So she took me home and um, while she was gone to get my medicine, I went to, to the washroom or whatever, I had diarrhea, and I was like crawling at this point, like I was on all fours just because I was just like exhausted. Like I couldn't, I couldn't physically stand up and walk. But on the way back, I was like, I'm so tired. I just wanna get to my bed as soon as possible. And so literally I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna push myself. So I stood up and I walked to my bedroom and I, the only time this has ever happened to me, I passed out and I hit my head on the headboard and literally it like knocked me onto my bed, which was the craziest thing. So I was like passed out. My mom finally woke, woke me up when she got back and she was like, what happened? Like you have a big bruise on your head. And I was like, I don't know. Like all of a sudden, like I remember walking back and that was kind of it. And so she gave me the medicine. That was about probably like, I would say like two o'clock in the afternoon. Like it wasn't like the morning. It was like early afternoon and so I took the medicine and I was like sleeping on and off going to the bathroom on and off uh, like all day and so it was about eight o'clock at night it was fairly dark and I was still like bathroom on and off sleeping on and off literally army crawling everywhere because I just didn't have the strength to walk and so um, I like went out to the couch and my mom looked at me and she was like you just do not look well. You do not look like you're getting any better. It's been six hours since I gave you medication and there's just no signs. Like you're getting worse. You're not getting any better. And so she's like, I'm I'm gonna take you to the hospital. And I was like, nope, mm -mm. I'm not going to the hospital. I can barely like walk. I can barely crawl. And you're wanting me to like sit in a waiting room for, I love free Canadian healthcare, but those waiting rooms, like the amount of time that you have to wait to see a doctor is 
insane. Like it's even worse than like a medi clinic where we went to get me checked out earlier that day. So I'm like, I could hardly handle like the medi clinic today, let alone going and sitting in a waiting room at a hospital. And she was like, well, then I'm calling an ambulance. And I was like, well, you do it. If you think that that's what you gotta do, you do it, but uh, I'm not sitting. Like I can't move kind of thing. So she calls it the ambulance and uh, they get there and we like, my mom tells them all about all my sign symptoms and like the medication that we were given. And they were like, oh, it's only been about six hours. You should really let her like sleep overnight, see if she gets better in the morning. And my mom was like, no, she's gotten worse. I just, I really want her to go to the hospital and I want her to get like physically checked out to make sure she, everything's okay because this, something's not right here. And so they were like, okay, yep, yeah, it's totally up to you. Like, we'll definitely take her in. So they gave me an IV, took me into the hospital. And so basically the paramedics have to stay with you until you get a room. And so um, the, so the paramedics stayed with me. It took four hours for a doctor to actually like, or for me to get placed into a room, sorry. And for like a nurse to come and like, make sure I was like registered and stuff. So I was in like one of those screened rooms. And um, at, at that point I had actually had a bedpan underneath me because I wasn't able to hold anything in. And I was like passing out in and out, just in and out of sleep, going to the bathroom, throwing up, you know. Uh, it, it wasn't a pretty sight. And so finally a doctor comes in two hours later, so a total of six hours in a waiting room, uh, or like waiting to see a doctor. And so the doctor comes in and he's like checking me over and he was like, do you by chance have your period? And I was like, like at this point, I didn't know what day it was, let alone whether I had my period or not. And so I was like, I don't know. And so they basically did like a pap test on me and they seen a tampon was in there. And so they pulled out the tampon and they got me into the ER right away. They put a central IV in my neck. There was a nurse who was doing her practicum and uh, she had never done one before. And so she had tried twice. You guys, as much as I was in and out of like everything and I like all of these memories are actually very foggy to me that like that's how bad I was. That needle, both those needles going into my neck was like, I cannot even describe the pain. It was awful. Like the worst pain I've ever felt. If you think about your neck and how much muscle is there and they have to like go through all of that muscle to get to the, the vein. Ugh, it was crazy. It was crazy, crazy. And so I like looked at her and I was like, you are not touching me with another needle. Um, not happening. So they ended up bringing a doctor in. He got the, the main IV in. And so basically at that point, what they were doing is l flushing my whole body like um, with blood and like getting the old blood. So basically what happened was the staff, uh, the bacteria from the tampon being in there for too long had caused staph, a staph infection inside of me and basically poisoned my whole bloodstream. So they needed to like get all the poison blood out and like flush it out and they were actually like putting blood in me as well like I actually still kind of have little dots from where um, all the needles I think I, I think I counted there were 11 needles on this side and it was like eight or nine on this side like it was is it, they couldn't see my veins like it was bad it was bad and so um, Every time, it, yeah, I can still see like over here where they're trying to get veins. It, it's just crazy. Um, and so like they cleaned me out. Uh, I was in the hospital for about two days, I believe. And um, everybody was like coming in to visit me. Why am I crying about this? I tell this story all the time. Why am I crying? Everybody was coming in to visit me. And uh, when I was finally getting better and um, able to like comprehend what was being said and that kind of stuff. The doctor came in and he looked at my mom and I and he was like, she's a very lucky girl. And um, my mom was like, yeah, yeah. And that's when he said she was eight hours from dying. So had my mom, had my mom listened to the, the EMT, the paramedic, 
I would have been dead. I wouldn't be here today to share my story. Um, had she listened to me, I wouldn't be here today to share my story. Uh, so like, thank God every day for my mom. Not only did she, she give me life, but she saved my life. Uh, geez. And so that's why I want to like share with you guys how important it is to take care of yourself when you have a period or, or, um, like an open wound of any kind, making sure that, um, there is no staph infection, making sure that the, uh, if there is an infection or if you're getting really rashy and fevered, go into the doctor and have them check you for TSS. You can go and talk to them and tell them like, no, I, uh, I think that I have this. Uh, I want to be tested for it and they can test you for it. It's not, it's not hard. It's testing your blood to make sure that, um, the counts are, uh, where they're supposed to be. Um, so little things like making sure that you change your tampon at least twice a day. I always say twice a day, once a day should be sufficient, um, on a lighter day, but be safe. It's better to be safe than sorry. I'm, I understand that tampons are expensive, but your life is priceless. You cannot put a price on your life. So make sure that you, if you choose to use a tampon, make sure that you are changing it appropriately. Um, it can also happen with sponges or um, I think on Google it said uh, that it could happen with cups just depending on how long the blood has stayed uh, in your system because it's old blood. What's being shed is old blood. And so if you think about it, um, when you have old blood, it like turns purple and it like hardens and that can cause the staph infection because like your vagina is open. Like that, that's your body is in there. Like it's kind of like an open wound essentially. So, um, just making sure that you're changing it all the time, uh, taking care of infections. Uh, it, it's, it's super prone to happen to people who have had it before. So like, I'm very, very, very cautious. Um, so, um, I'm 30% more likely to have it again, but I do know the signs and symptoms of it. So it is something that I'm always asking. If I go into the doctor and I have a super high fever, I get them to check my blood and I say, I've had TSS before and I don't want it again. Or if I do have it again, I want to take the appropriate steps so that it doesn't get to where I'm literally on a hospital bed, not able to hold my bowels. Um, it, people who have just had a baby are super prone to it because you have a lot of openness uh, inside, like you've just created life and like all of that happens down there. I don't really know what happens down there scientifically, uh, but I'm sure that moms can attest that there are some open wounds down there. Uh, once, once you've had babies, like just making sure that you are taking care of yourself completely asking questions that need to be asked. If you guys have any questions for me, I would love nothing more than to help you guys out and educate um, as much as I'm able to with my story. But I think that it's something that isn't talked about. Um, you read it, like I said, on a pamphlet in a tampon box that you typically throw away. Like how I hadn't read it on the tampon box. Like I didn't read that thing. So I had no clue. Um, my mom had no clue like she like you just don't think of it it's something that you just don't think of and it's something that people don't talk about enough i think that um any education is good education and just making sure that we take care of our bodies and like i said knowing the signs and symptoms are number one so that's like your fever uh rashy thro uh, throwing up being nauseous being super dizzy so fever of like above a hundred like make sure you go in um yeah you you have diarrhea those are like the main ones that i can personally remember uh like i said those those two three days in there i it was all a blur <laughs> um but yeah just make sure that you take care of yourself i hope this helps somebody i hope that i've reached the audience that i had hoped to reach and just gotten that word out and yeah i love you guys i just i wanted to share my story i didn't know how i didn't know when and it just felt like today was the right day so 
I hope you guys have an amazing day. Um, I love you and thank you so much for listening.